So welcome everybody to so today's uh, webinar on the live demo on Open Pago token. I'm pretty pleased to welcome Dr. Nicolas Mokisa and um, Alain today to our today's webinar. Um, Nicolas Mokisa from the Anuia will give a short introduction on Anuia's work and the importance uh, of the today's webinar. Later, I will um, give a short introduction on the End Access Foundation and what um, the Open Paygo token has an importance of the sector and why it is important for the intelligence today. And then Alain will work us through a live demo covering some basics on the Open Paygo token and also showing on a live screen sharing how to set up a device. Um, so you are welcome, Nicolas, to uh, to present yourself, and then we are uh, welcome on stage. Well, thank you very much, uh, v uh, Vivian. I'm as Dr. Nicholas has highlighted, and I'm glad to be on this platform to share with the uh, different private sector players uh, what you know it does and what we envisage in uh, this partnership. Uh, I've, I've arranged this, organized this webinar to give an opportunity to an access to share some of its works on open pego uh, token uh Unrea's role is of course to consolidate and mobilize private sector players to see how best the sector can grow and uh, ensure that our end users get the very best of the energy and energy efficiency uh, services and uh i have to record that uh, pay as you go has played a, a tremendous role in energizing and electrifying uganda Today, as a country, we, we pride in about 57% uh, electrification, where about 38% 30, uh, is through off-grids. And mainly the off-grids, I'm looking at uh, standalone system plug and play, which have uh, been mainly uh, marketed and uh, costed on the basis of pay as you go, considering the, uh, the income rates and cash flows of most of our people in uh, Uganda and Sub-Saharan Africa at large. And uh, it's no secret that pay as you go has played a tremendous role in electrifying Sub-Saharan Africa, given uh, that uh, Sub-Saharan African, uh, Africans, their base, income base is low. So they really want to you know, spend less, given that they also earn less. So the record is good that pay as you go has played a tremendous role. But over time, I think in the last uh, couple of five years, pay as you go has had, has stagnated to a level that uh, since 2016, We've only recorded a one percent increment and we've noticed that some of the big players have transitioned from tier one solar systems and gone for higher level tier systems but have also shifted from uh, some have shifted from business to uh, to, uh, in, uh from the lower end to business to business category others have completely exited the market and have gone to telecommunications and now doing into phones so but we believe and still think that uh Pay as you go to as a role to play. I also have to mention that uh, at the moment, the World Bank is working on a pay as you go toolkit, which was drafted for a couple of uh, uh, developing countries, where in Africa we have Uganda and Ethiopia. The draft was passed last year, and at the moment, the, we are undertaking a testing stage, we are the testing stage of this uh, toolkit. The testing stage is meant to end in two, uh, next year in March, and thereafter we'll start piloting. So I believe that uh, this uh, webinar comes at a very critical and up, uh, timely moment. The people can better appreciate pay, pay go and how best to incorporate it in their uh, business models. So I don't want to take much of the time. I'm glad to be here, but I also welcome all the sector players that are joining in and those that will be joining over time. Take this opportunity to learn and see how best they can market and sell their products using pay as you go. Thank you very much, Vivian. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Uh, this was interesting and I think a great framing for today's webinar and also putting the importance on PAYGO technology and systems in general for, for your businesses and for the electrification sector. Um, so very happy you, you, you joined and we are able to do this webinar together. Um, so let me now introduce 
the Annexis Foundation. Um, we are the Annexis Foundation and we stand for open innovation for energy access. Um, this is because, and why are we doing what we do? And um, we believe in open innovation because achieving universal energy access, which is the sustainable development goal seven, the United Nations, that it requires a lot of new innovation and approaches um, to achieve it because it's a sector and the business that hasn't been done so far uh, extensively. And so the energy access organizations, companies, NGOs, um, governmental players engaged in, in energy access, generally there are very scarce funds to develop these innovations, scarce funds and time. Um, However, a lot of these innovations are just reinventing the wheel. So instead of being able to focus on actually connecting end customers and bringing electricity to the people, tier one to tier three, tier four, or even to tier five, they're rather concentrated on finding technical solutions or tweaks to get their business running or the system. But all these challenges they are facing and these tweaks they are doing and solutions are way too often pretty much similar or exactly the same that other organizations or their competitors already have developed. Um, so this is um, what we want to achieve in the sector, so is to promote the development and adoption of open source innovation. Um, this to build an equitable ecosystem, uh, which also allows local companies to take part in achieving universal uh, energy access for all. Um, and this is the, we are driven by the belief that only by sharing these innovations as open innovations, we can create this ecosystem, provide the basic tools and everything what is necessary to actually be able to concentrate on reaching end customers and not sitting in our laboratories or in our offices and everybody reinventing just the same solutions for exactly the same problems. Um, and we have three main arms, which once we do it, we support, we curate, we promote. Our support um, is based on a financial tool where we identify technologies or tools or business models or approaches um, which can disrupt the sector and have the potential to benefit all or main or at least a lot of players in the sector. Um, and we support this, the development of these solutions, of these innovations financially. And uh, we are also hand-holding in the, in the development process and do a lot of promotional work in the adoption process and also additional technical developments if needed. Um, at NX, we also maintain a curated repository of high quality open source innovations. Um, and we select them properly and, and we curate them over time and to allow energy access companies to to go in one place and find the solution they need but open source and adopt it to their needs and we as a third part we do a lot of promotion for open innovation in general in the sector that not only our financial support ends up innovation but also other companies independently from our support do open innovation and do information sharing and technology sharing and there are also other players doing open innovation and we believe there's still a lot of learning on all sides, on the company side, on the donor side, on the public side, um, to really leverage the potential of open innovation. Um, so just to give you a brief on, on what we have done so far, um, you can generally put them in three sections, software, hardware, business models, even though the word business models might also be a concept or a financial tool. Um, so let me start from the top, so software. Today we will talk uh, later about the open payload token, so I won't say too much about that. And then we also finance the survey toolkit uh, developed by Devergy, which is a toolkit to allow uh, to uh, survey rural areas pre-electrification. So when you want to do an electrification process, a tool, an open source tool to help you to do the survey, then there's an air link um, developed by Simo Solar, which is a relay extension based on Bluetooth to allow IoT communication in remote areas where there's no 2G or 4G coverage. 
battery management system for lithium ion batteries. Also, yeah, you see it's already hardware software because it's hardware piece, but also software piece. Then Cicada modules for Wi-Fi and also 3G communication, um, which allow like to plug in on your, on your already existing device and extend them to add in Wi-Fi communication or uh, yeah, GSM communication. Um, further on, the open smart meter, which is also going more and more to the hardware part. It's a physical AC uh, electricity meter with IoT communication for mainly uh, AC mini grids. And the DREC initiative, um, which is a software piece, but it's mainly a model, a business model and a financial tool which allows to monetize the renewable energy production of decentralized energy systems, which was so far only possible for bigger utility scale or C&I scale energy systems, but now also even a mini grid or possibly also solar home systems can monetize the renewable energy uh, production on a certificate market. And AgriGrid, which is a business model which integrates electricity sales with agricultural pre-processing um, on, on the local side to keep more of the value chain and of, um, yeah, of the value generation on site and not in the urban areas or very urban areas. All that are projects we have funded and which are open source and openly available on our site. Um, so yeah, OpenPago token. Let me say a few words about OpenPago token to give you the introduction. Um, what is so great about the OpenPago token? So in the past, um, devices, and custom and the device of customers were often locked in um, into one open pay, uh, pay go provider platform because there were different token systems um, pay go token systems which were in place and each provider had its own so this caused a lot of trouble and and like delays and additional costs for for distributors which had like to integrate with, when they integrate with one, they had to decide where I want to integrate with another one because it's additional development work. And manufacturers often had to have like stock of the same product, just like integrated with different platforms. Um, and it's overall created like a lot of unnecessary costs uh, to the industry. And yeah, there was a missing interoperability. Um, so how it worked, so I was off good came up, is one of the loan providers said, hey, we have the idea to make one open token, an open token system, which then can be integrated by everybody in the sector. And then we quickly decided, yeah, we financed this project, we saw the potential, this can be disrupted. Um, we financed development, this was developed in five months, and just two months after completion, the three main, or three, three of the main loan providers integrated um, with, with each other and met each other interoperable, so Pego Ops, Agent, and Gaza. And very quickly, a lot of the manufacturers were automatically um, also integrated with all of these platforms. So there was not one device which had to integrate with all of the platforms, integrated with one, it was automatically integrated with all the other platforms, um, which saved until today a significant amount uh, of money to the whole industry. Um, so today there's an easily implemented PAYGO token system and how easy it is, you will see just in a few minutes, um, which is available and widely interoperable in the market already. Um, and Nexus still works on maintaining um, and helping maintaining also the developer, allows us with still maintaining um, this platform and, and this product and we, we help and we are still uh, promoting it. That's also why you are here with us today and we show how great this token system is and how it can be beneficial for your system, uh, for your business. Um, and you you will learn actually on a live demo how to integrate it, like really hands-on. Um, so I don't want to waste too much of our time and leave the time to the real application of the PAYGO token on, to learn more about the options you have and how to integrate it to your system. Um, yeah, but let me say that open innovation in energy is a pathway to success. We are convinced by it and um, that's why we at NXS bring open innovation to energy access and that's why you are sitting today on this webinar 
and we'll now have the chance to listen to the live demo um, of Ola. I hand over to you. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Vivian, for the presentation. It's quite clear. And uh, uh, I believe uh, we all got uh, enough information, enough information from it. Um, now it's time we look into the OpenPaygo token. Uh, yeah, but before starting, just to recap, um, the OpenPaygo token is just um, a way to encode a value into a token on a server, then entering that token on a device using the keypad uh, to check if the token is valid, then use uh, that value accordingly. So um, in this session, before diving into the code, we'll be uh, talking about the different key components that are needed in order to use the OpenPaygo token, but also uh, we'll talk about different modes that can be used while generating the token. And then we'll see how we can uh, set up those devices, like the different parameters that uh, are needed to set uh, those, those components. So um, in order to generate um, a token, we need a, a server, which can be any software provider or any uh, custom product that any yeah, every manufacturer will, would, would like. And uh, this is where the token will be generated. And then that token will be entered on a specific device. And those are the main components that we need. We need the server and we need the device. And uh, the device will have any keep, a keypad and then uh, will decode the token and then it will use um, that value. And um, while generating the token, um, there are two different modes that can be used. We have um, the set time and add time. Um, add, add time is used when you want to add time to the current value on the device. Let's say you have three days on the device and you add two days which means at the end of the day, you will have five days left. And set time is used when you want to set the time on the device to a specific time. Let's say we have three days, and then you set time to one day. That means at the end of the day, you will only have um, one day left. And uh, in order to set up uh, those components, there are different parameters that are needed. Uh, let's start talking, specific, um, talking about the server. We need um, the starting code. Uh, we also need the key. This is the key that is used to encode and decode um, the token. So it's uh, it's important to remember that while setting up the, the server, the key should be encoded uh, in hexadecimal format. So we'll see it also in the code. There is the time divider, which is um, a division factor that is used uh, on the value. Uh, this one comes in handy when you want to, um, to use like a value, let's say, uh, you want to use this token for just a, a, a number a, a number of hours instead of the whole days the whole a, the whole day you just use a number of hours and then we'll use the time divider there is the the circuit digit mode and uh, this one if it's set to one then the token will have a digit between um, one and four otherwise it will have digit between zero and nine which means like this one is useful depending on the keypad used on the device. If the, the keypad has only four uh, digits, then uh, you will use this one. Then um, on the server, we keep also the count. And uh, this one is just a value that keeps on incrementing uh, whenever a new token is generated on the server. When you generate a new token, the count keeps uh, on incrementing. Uh, same thing for the device, but here, let's see, you will need a serial number. Well, this one is not really used during the token generation, but yeah, we know that it's important for every manufacturer to handle uh, serial numbers for their devices. We have the starting code as well. We have the key, uh, which uh, should be uh, in hexadecimal format. Uh, we have the time divider as well, and we have the circuit digit mode, and we have the count and uh, there is also the test code. This test code is like after setting up the device, let's say you want to test it, to test it for a couple of minutes, for a couple of seconds, that's, all, that's where this one will be used. And every manufacturer will have their own way to implement uh, this, this use case. So um, as we just talked about the parameters, uh, now I, I think it's time we see how we can use uh, 
we can use them and how we how quickly we can generate um, the token using uh, the open pego token so um yeah uh, the open pego token code is on github uh, you can find it there and you can clone it you can also download it and then use it in your device and on the device and on the server and uh, it has also some information that might be needed also it contains also documentations that will be that will be useful and uh, in my case i've already downloaded the code as you can see i've already downloaded the code and uh, i've also uh, i assume that I, my device is ready and my server is ready so that I can go straight to see how we can generate the, the token. As I mentioned earlier, it's better, to, it's important to remember that uh, the key should be encoded uh, as hexadecimal so that it be sent as byte. So probably in Teams, you might store it, uh, you might want to share it as a string, but then while setting it on the device or on the server, it's better to uh, encode it that's why you can see i did it as well now um let's try to run this code and see as we can see my uh, device is up and running and my server is also up so um which means we can proceed and then we start the first the first process to generate um to generate the token so um let's let's go on the server in the create a, a method to generate um, to generate a token um, we'll be giving it a value that we want to decode to, to, to encode in the token and then um, we'll pass also the mode as I mentioned earlier which can be either add time or set time and uh, in order to decode uh, to encode the token we'll use the encoder which can uh, which has the functionality to generate the token. And then we use the method called generate standard token. Um, this method uh, needs the starting code. So we pass the server starting code. It needs uh, the key, which is the server key. And uh, it needs the value, which means like the value that we want to encode into the token. It needs the count, so, uh, which is the server count, in order to keep imp to, to increment uh, the count on the server, and uh, it needs the mod. So we pass also the mod that we'll be using and the restricted digit set to make sure that we generate token uh, depending on the device for each device. Yeah, and. Uh, the generate standard token returns uh, two different values. We have the uh, the count; it returns the count. So we need to update. We need to update our server count, and it returns also the token. And uh, let's also return our token that has been generated. This uh, this function will generate a token. Let's see if we can get it. Uh, so we go on the server, then we generate the token. Let's say we pass um, five as value. Then the mod, um, the open pego token code base has uh, some shared values that uh, will be useful when it comes to the mod. And from there you can, let's try to use the first one, uh, token type, then we use the add time. Uh, then let's print our token. So um, if you run the code, you can see that our, our code, uh, our token is being generated. So which means everything is good. Now um, the remaining step is to decode, to verify it on the device, and then use uh, use that value on the device. So let's go on the device and um, uh, write another method that we'll use to to decode. Let's say to, uh, after the user is entered the value using the keypad, and then you want to decode it on the device. Um, let's say decode token, so um, it will be receiving the, the token itself. Okay. 
And now, um, in order to decode the token, we, this is, we will need the decoder from the OpenPayGo token, then uh, get activation value count and type from token. So um, this function, it needs uh, the token, and it needs the starting code. So we pass also the device starting code. Then um, we pass the key, which is the device key. Then we pass the, it needs also the last count, which is the device last count. And uh, it needs the, the six digit set, which is the device six digit mode, and uh, the used, uh, used count. Um, normally, while configuring my device, I created a separate a list that will be tracking all the used count and the used uh, token so that in the future, to make sure that if a token has already been used, we don't use it anymore. Uh, the decode, decoding the token uh, will be able to handle it. So this that, that, that will be the use of this used count. So we pass the used count there. Then, uh, okay, okay. I think that's it. So um, the get activation value returns three different values. We have the token value. I mean, the value that has been encoded in the token and uh, it returns the token, um, token count and it returns the token type. and it returns the token type. Now, um, after decoding the token, you need to check if it is valid. So if the token is not valid, so if the token is not valid, the token value will be none. So that means like if it's not there, we just say that uh, it's invalid and we can return false. And then every manufacturer will have their own way probably to prevent the user from entering uh, invalid token over and over again. And then you can handle it in this case. Then the next thing is if a token has already been used, uh, then the token value will be equal to minus two. If the token value is equal to minus two, that means like the token has already been used uh, in the past. So we can say it's an old token. And then, um, um, otherwise, it means like everything is good. So we can proceed and use the value as we want on the device. For example, in my use case, uh, I was encoding, let's say five, I, will, I was, I'm encoding days into the token. So um, let's try to use the value that we have on the device. The first thing that we will do is to make sure that we are basing also the count on the device to make sure that the server and the, the device are synchronized so we give it the token count uh, the second one is uh, we will update the uh, the use count to make sure that after using this token we don't use it anymore and to update the use count there is a function in the decoder that will help us to do that so the update use count and what it needs just the pass use count. So we pass the device use count. It needs the value, which means like uh, the, the, the value that we got from the token and it needs the new count, which is the current count that we, we got from the device, from the token. All right, now um, we have updated the count and the use count. Now let's try to use the token. Uh, in, our, in, our, in my use case, I will be setting um, the expiration date on the device. Uh, I will be setting the expiration date on the device depending on the number of days that have been used. So um, I'm going to, to create just uh, another, create another method for that. And here I will be passing the token value and um, And um, 
and the mod to make sure that I handled the both cases correctly. And um, um, the first thing that we need to do is to get the the number of days in my because as I mentioned, we are using the my in my in my use case I'm using number of days, and here we have the token value. And remember to make sure that you are getting correct number of days. This is where we will use the um, the time divider uh, to make sure that if uh, I want, if the time divider is two, then we'll divide the value into that was encoded by two. Uh, then here, the next thing is uh, to, to use the token depending on both use cases. Uh, let's start with the, if it's set time, so we also use the shared values. Um, we get the token type and set time. Yeah, so if it's set time, then that means like I will just uh, update the expiration date on my device to uh, to the current to the current date. Then I I add the new number of days. Uh, otherwise. I mean, we are adding, then uh, we'll say, we just say expiration date is, uh, we get the current one and we add, we add this. And uh, sometimes the um, expiration date might be already in the past, so it's better to make sure that uh, it is updated so that we have, we have correct value. That's why we, we need to check if it, if it's already in the past, we just uh, set it to the current one. Yeah, then uh, this updates device status, will update the device, um, will update our device and we can use it to make sure that, so we give it the token value and we give it the token type. Okay, now uh, one thing that I uh, forgot to mention is while decoding the token, you need to change its type to uh, to integers because when you when you generate a token, it's returned it's being returned as a string. So when you want to decode it, you need to change it to numbers. Then you can decode it. Uh, now in our test code, uh, we have our token here. Uh, let's let's use it on the device. and see what, what will be the output. So um, let's also, let's also uh, get the status of our device and the server as well. Then, um, Now, um, this is the initial status. Here we generate the token and here we decode it. We're using it on the device. And let's run the code again. Okay, we are having a exception. Okay, saying that the decode, uh, we didn't pass the type on the update, okay. I forgot to pass something uh, on the update use count. So we pass the token type that was used. Now uh, we run the code again. Yeah. As you can see, um, initially our expiration date was set to today, uh, the 15th. And uh, after decoding, after decoding the token, it is now set to the 20th, which means like the token was used correctly, and uh, the value, which was five days, was also uh, used uh, was also decode, decoded correct, correctly, and the value was used to set to 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 set up to be set on the on the device. Now we did an implementation to see if a token cannot be used. Let's see if it's it's working. So let's just say device dot um, decode. Let's try to decode this token twice, and see if if that implementation is working as expected. 
Yeah, as you can see here at the end, we have a null token, which means uh, you cannot reuse a token uh, twice or more, more than once, I mean, because uh, the token value is being returned. Uh, is, is, uh, the value is minus two and our code is working perfectly. Yeah, this in short, how quickly you can generate a token and decode it using the open Pago token without uh, having to handle the code yourself, like uh, writing the, 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 the implementation yourself just by using the code that has been shared. And if you want to learn more about how you can use it and how uh, you can set up different things on the device, um, in the code base, there is a directory called simulators, and there we have a device simulator, which has uh, many other advanced functionalities that you can also set up on your device. Same thing for the server. It also has uh, some many advanced functionalities that you can also use on your um, on your on your server. Just in the code base, you can check you can check them. It also has some examples, and it also has some tests that you can check. And um, while uh, implementing while implementing the Open Paygo token, if you need help, you can just go to the Open Paygo website, and then in the documentation sec in the documentation section. You just go to the I would love uh, some free help and there and access will reach out to you uh, for help. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, we just talked about uh, the different components that can be used. I mean, the device and the server. We just uh, talked about um, the different mode that we can use while generating the, comp the, the, the token, but also we just saw how quick and easy it is to generate a token and decode it on the device. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Alain. This was great and very interesting and insightful. Um, um, I bet, I mean, it would be necessary for, for most of us if we want to implement to have a screen record, but we have a screen record um, of the whole webinar. Um, and thank you for, for the very detailed way to, to structure it, how uh, companies could use it, what are the features, and showing step by step how to do it in the code, in fact. Um, so what brings us to the Q&A? Uh, there were already one or two questions which went through the chat, uh, but I invite all of you to post questions. Um, you are free to post any like very technical questions on the coding, uh, which you just saw from Alain on possibilities to use the Open Pago token uh, experience with the Open Pago token, um, also on in access in general or on Unreal. Um, we are here to answer your question. We have also the pleasure to have somebody from Solaris Offgrid uh, here, the developer of the Open Pago token, if we might need his assistance in answering some questions. Um, Maybe let if there are no qu further questions so far, um, let me go to the first questions which were answered um, from Alain. There are two questions. I believe the first one is directed to us, to me, uh, an access foundation. Um, we have funded one. Um, electricity meter it's we have funded one ac meter it's a conventional ac meter as it's used in also utility grids um it has a keypad so uh pago enabled um it's not the open pago token so far because it's energy based and not time based um but we are working on this integration and yeah it's designed for single phase ac energy measurements um and this is the one open source uh electricity meter that we have funded you can also find it on our homepage, same as the open pago token there you will direct it to the github um and you find the hardware and software uh, you need to build it and set it up by your own and now the next question from alain um for Wicked One, what is the biggest system you've worked with 
Uh, I'm not sure to whom this question is directed. Uh, I guess what this meant is this, what is the biggest big trans systems where open Pago systems or Pago capital B2 have been integrated? Um, that's something I'm not able to answer as we do not do the integration. We sometimes assist in the adoption process, but we don't do it by our own. We have financed the open Pago token. Um, I am, I don't know if Nicholas, you are possibly aware of some of your members that have done this exercise. If so, you're, you're happy to answer this question. Otherwise, we will follow up on the question in the aftermath of this webinar. Uh, thank you, Vivian. Uh, I don't have anyone in our, amongst our members that I know of that has uh, done this integration like you've elaborated. Because most of them, these are private companies that uh, contract different service providers. So at, at times you, you, don't, uh, you don't get to know that information, that behind door information that uh, they're involved in. So since we do not necessarily develop some of these systems or uh, softwares, we're not trivial to such information. Unless an individual company, either any of the representatives on the call, could uh, disclose such information, but uh, we do not have that information at our site. Okay, thank you, Nicholas. I just saw that Claudio from Solaris Offgrid, the developer of the Open Paper token, answered in the chat, but I also invited him on stage to possibly Hello, just quickly everyone. answer this question. Like directly. Yes, uh, from what I am aware of, Victron integrated it with in its uh, SHS 200, 200 meaning 200 watt uh, as uh, input power, and it's integrated in in this uh, in this system. So um, this is the um, the the knowledge I have about the this integration. Okay, thank you. Um, the, this, I, I think this answers the question quite like. Specifically, um, now the question is of how much of this process of the PAYGO integration is free? Um, so let me take this question first. Um, Your mic is off. Oh, my mic went off. Um, I'm sorry. Um, so, Stephen, your question on how much of this process is, of the open pay code integration is free. Um, I mean, the code is freely available. Um, it's on GitHub. You can go there directly on GitHub. You can find it through Solaris Offgrid. You can find it through our page. Um, you can download it. You can use the recording of this webinar to get some insights how to do it. And there are also quite a big community around it. Which, helps uh, and has helped with a lot of troubles that people had. It's well documented so far. Um, you can also reach out to us um, if you need additional help besides everything which is already available on the how-to and documentation on the GitHub page developed by Solaris and this webinar, for example, um, and the chats in the community you can find. Um, and then if you need additional help, uh, as Alain showed in the very end of his uh, presentation, you can always contact us um, and we can figure out there is no fixed number. It will a bit depend on your background. Uh, we obviously expect like that you have done the minimal effort on like looking what is freely available and where we can jump in to do the handholding and provide some additional resources. Um, but if you have a software development background or you have access to, you should be able to do it mainly by your own. But yeah, there's also help available from our side, uh, which we are happy to, to provide. Um, I hope this answers your question, Stephen. Just adding one thing here. So we had many companies integrating this uh, the open pay go token uh, most of them they did it by themselves uh, both in the server side so using python 
and on the device side uh, using well C C plus um, plus. Some other companies maybe they needed help, so we provided help on a consultant consultancy basis as well. So paid by the mandate, uh, and we provided support to to help these companies integrating their token into the device. Yeah, thank you, Claudio. So yeah, there's also Solaris always to help, but yeah, you have to decide how how, you, if, how much you can do by your own, how much we as an Nexus can can provide as we help, and how where you you need Solaris um, to come in or not. This um, yeah it has to be it depends on each company and, and their background and their and their know how. Um, on I have a question to you, Alain. Um, we we especially also have to say we did this webinar also with a third party developer who's actually not from the energy access sector nor has ever worked with Pago systems or the open Pago and, and we specifically did that to show it's doable um, and we yeah we asked him to do this presentation to just go on the page go on to github read the documentation download the code you are a software developer, so this this is quite kind of a prerequisite to do it. But then you should be able to set it up. Um, but still, I mean, we are always looking into how we can do things better. Um, is there any improvement that you could, would suggest, um, like on the coding, where you as a software developer say, ah, if I could and I have infinite time or so on? I, I would improve this part on the documentation where you say, oh, there is a thing that maybe should be explained better or put it in another way. So yeah, we are we want to improve. It's an open source project. The idea is like in a community, make the things better. So do you have any of, um, of those recommendations maybe? Yeah, um, thank you, Vivian. So uh, personally, after reading the documentation, First of all, I was new to the uh, pay-as-you-go business model and everything, so uh, I got introduced uh, to this thing by Inaccess. So after reading the documentation, um, and I started like using the code, it was not like uh, straightforward for, forward for me. Uh, I had uh, 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 to, to to go through the code base itself so that I can see how I can implement it, and um, it was not that hard because. There are tests, like there are some functionalities you can just, as a developer, you can just go there and look at the function and say, oh, this is how it works and this is how it's done. So that was one thing that help, can help me. Which means on the documentation side, uh, what I would recommend is to have a separate documentation, mostly for developers uh, on how they can set up, let's say, um, a device or how they can set up um, a server. For example, that thing of uh, encoding the token in hexadecimal. I'm finding it was not easier. Like I had to to look into the implementation and see this is what they need. Then, uh, then uh, that's how I found it. So having a separate documentation for developers um, that will be really helpful. But otherwise, just uh, by looking at the code, and if um, you are software developers, most of the time you you will not be lost. Okay, this is a, a great feedback. Um, and thank you. And as I said, yeah, we we always try to to improve, um, yeah, the open innovation that we have funded. And I guess also Solaris is also doing some improvements. Um, okay, there is a new question by Dorothy. Um, which devices can easily be integrated to PayGo in general? Um, I will give it a first shot and then possibly <laughs> in, in, invite uh, uh, others to, to also answer this question. Um, basically, you need some basic intelligence of the system to switch it on and off. Um, but the idea is that any device, like which is like electrically, electrically run, which kind of pump a fridge and a TV, a solar home system um, can be integrated with Pago. I mean, dependent on, on what the hardware is, you need to add some additional hardware and some you maybe just need to add a keypad um, because the rest of the hardware is already inside. Um, and for others, it, it would take a bit more of hardware modification to make them Pago enabled. 
Um, but yeah, besides that, I, I believe that pretty much every electrically run um, uh, device could be Pago integrated. Uh, but I maybe leave it to Claudio or to Nicholas to maybe give some other insights on that. No, as you as you were saying, Vivian, uh, it's uh, as you say. So any device that has an input method to enter token can be uh, made uh, pay as you go enabled. So it can be a TV, can be a fridge, can be a solar home system, mobile phones, too, and tablets. We have uh, some companies integrating open payroll token into their mobile phone and tablets. So uh, the, the mobile phone cannot be unlocked un unless you you enter the correct password, uh, the correct token. Um, so yes, it's pumps, as you said. So many appliances out there can be uh, used uh, under a pay-as-you-go lease basis. Um, there are certain specific minimum hardware requirements like having a microcontroller with enough memory, a switch to switch on and off the, the, the power lines, an input method that can be a keypad but also can be, we have um, integrated with company using IR receiver, so with a, um, with a uh, remote controller like in your TV or uh, Bluetooth mode, GSM activation based Wi Fi, so many different input methods uh, can be used. Well, of course, the keypad is uh, one of the cheapest and uh, most re uh, used because uh, you don't need to rely on, on external connectivity or external. Uh, uh, modules, let's say, if the keypad is integrated, so you don't need anything else. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, so there were some more technical insights on, on, on the technical hardware requirements you would need. Um, so I have one more question to Alain, and I also have one to Nicolas, but let me first go to the one to Alain. When I would decide as an energy access company to decide, okay, I want to use an integrator open pago token in my system like the very first step i mean you showed the github and you showed our page but what is like the possibly the first document or the first thing you would suggest to read as and i asked this question particularly to you as you had to start from scratch and so so do others so now that you have done it what would be maybe the first document or the first page you would suggest somebody to to look at yeah, okay. Um, just by going to, to, to the GitHub to the GitHub repository, there are uh, two, uh, two documents. The first one is the general documentation and the second one is the example implementation. The, first, the general implementation is good because it has um, like uh, many details on the open pago token like it contains like its details it talks about many things in two details but then if you want to uh, to see some other technical things you have to go into the example implementation because uh, that's where they mesh although um, it uh, uses the, the the it uses the one built for c and c plus plus something like that but there you will find some uh, uh, some technical um, examples <clears throat> and uh, technical documentation that will be useful. So it's better you start with the general documentation, then you go to the to the example without forgetting reading both. It's really important. Okay, thank you, Alain. I think this, this is a good hint for a, like adopter for the first steps to follow. There's a new question from Alegian. Sorry, I, I'm sure I haven't pronounced the name right, but I tried. Um, saying I'm new to this topic, found it very interesting. This is great. So, so we did something interesting. I'm happy about that. Um, just want to know how secure is it? Um, I believe there are like two ways to understand the question. The one is security in terms of tempering. So I have a Pago device um, delivered to somewhere and how am I sure that it, it isn't tempered and just like overrun the, the Pago um, capability that I've integrated. 
um, and the other one possibly like the software and data security uh, one. Um, I believe uh, this year, as Anna is also saying in the chat, um, that Alain or Claudio could answer it. I, I believe that Claudio uh, maybe in the first try and then Alain maybe from a outside software developer view you could give like your insights on, on security of the code um, yeah would possibly be interesting uh, yes uh, sure the, um, the token as Alan was showing is encoded or encrypted uh, and then decrypted in the device uh, so to encrypt the, the token you use a 32 bit a 32 digits uh, key um in hexadecimal format the encryption method uh, it's uh, well a zip hash to four so it's quite complex encryption method and the the entire uh, encryption and decryption mechanism is been audited by an external security consultant you have all the documentation in github uh, so you have the report from the security consultant and uh, was an extensive experience in cryptography and communication protocol and he said is uh, is approved so it's secure to be used and that's why also many companies well some companies they are starting to get open pago certified so we have also a certification uh, for uh, the open pago token integrated devices uh and some of the companies they are listed in our website they have the open pego certificate uh, certificate that they can um, display uh meaning that they are compatible with the technology and and they feel safe using it thank you claudio i don't know Alain, is there anything to add from your side yeah so uh on my side uh as a developer you know like nothing is secure at 100 percent but it's important for developers to remember that for example we talked about the key so you have to make sure that that key is secured like you can share it with anyone for example the the, the project is open source so uh the, the your device code should not be open so you should not push your key to get up something like that so you have to make sure that uh, it's secret it's not shared with anyone but also something else that I can suggest to developers is when you're setting up your device or the server, uh, you should be able to update that key later. Let's say uh, um, someone got access to the keys and then uh, uh, they will be able to generate different tokens. So you should be able to invalidate the old token and use the new token. That, those are the two things that I can mention when it comes to security. Okay, thank you, Alain. This uh, was helpful and I guess, and I hope we answered Dorothy's question well. She gave us a this one. I guess this means yes. And um, it's a shame we lost Nicholas already. He said he had to leave sharp. Um, now it's two minutes before I had a question to him. But um, this question I can also make to the auditory. Um, before doing this question, I just want to. Um, Go on the pools. We had like the pools, like the one about have your software developed in house. There's not too many, so this may us make the next question. And if you would be interested in a software developer, so how to set up Open Pago token? There are quite a few. So as we said on our page, you also find this you, "I need help in integration" button. Click it, and then you will be directed to a little form to like request help from our side, and we're more than happy to provided and as I said it depends on how much help you need um, and the last question is related to what we actually do we apply we fund open source innovation for energy access so the question which you don't need to answer now but take it home is do you have any uh, innovative ideas or which are sector building ideas which can be used then more than by your own company but sector wide by other companies even your competitors but you believe that would be good to achieve, achieve universal access to energy quicker and would have would like some money to fund it and you are open to make it open source and willing to make it open source as the open pay token is then check our page and 
apply for funding and yeah we are happy to evaluate your your ideas to hopefully um fast track access to energy much faster than than we are doing so far because we won't meet the goal but we want to um so thank you you were here um now it's 10 uh, oh yeah for the ones in eastern africa it's 12 for the ones in europe it's 10 um and for the others somewhere else in the world it's another time and um, thank you you joined um nicholas is back but yeah as, as we are um already run over the time i believe we should close uh, but i would like to thank you to nicholas thank you to claudio thank you to Allah. is there any closing words you want to say nicholas i'm not sure he's hearing me so then i will close it thank you for attending this webinar and see you soon in one of our next webinars and thank you for all uh, people on stage today goodbye yep. goodbye thank you thank you bye bye